he is Dr. Joseph Skoda, and he has been speaking and training on numerous topics for several years. He shares his military experience both during and after, and some of the struggles he dealt with while searching for work. He retired from the United States Air Force after 21 years and calls Pisgah Beach home. And his intent is to ensure that we're all looking out for each other to ensure minimal stress every day. Mm -hmm. He has a PhD in psychology, an MBA, and a BS in aviation. Very nice. He is strongly involved in his community and is active with Toastmasters as District 33 Program Quality Director, Commander American Legion Post 56, Commander Disabled American Veterans Chapter 82, Santa Maria, California Honor Guard, professional speaker and trainer, and founder of Gig Connections, and is consistently adding content to a social media show on the segment of In the Office with Joseph Scott. Please help give me a warm help, help me give a warm welcome to Dr. Joseph Scott tonight. Thank you very much. It's totally appreciated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I have to convince myself this morning over and over again I'll just fall asleep. Oh. Especially after this wonderful meal. I appreciate the meal that you helped provide for me. Uh, shrimp and pizza and spaghetti and salad. And I broke my own rule. I never eat before I get up and give a presentation. But the food looked too good. I have to eat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suffer for it later. You may. I'll just look at my teeth. It's gonna be horrible. So, anyways, we're gonna talk a little bit about managing stress. Does anyone know what stress is? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Only, only one person. What? Daily reality. Daily reality. Right. Now, we have stress everywhere. We, we look around us, especially in the workplace. We're gonna talk about some of those issues right now. I do have stress in my life. And I don't always get fed very well. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? I know. Anyways, let's talk uh, like some of the objectives of today's speech. Obviously, we we'll look up what is stress, what causes stress, identify different symptoms, and probably more importantly, how we're going to decrease workplace stress. Sound fair? Yep. Will you work with me? Yes. Yes. All right. This is going to be a an unstressful environment, correct? <laughs> and feel free to throw food. I, I, can, I work for food. I work really good for food. So, let me get away from the screen. All right. So, give me some ideas of common stress in the workplace. Yes, sir. Your job loss. Job loss is a big one. Job loss is deadline. That's another good one. Dealing so, with I, stupid. What's that? Dealing with family. stupid problems. <laughs> No, this, this, you know, just stupid, people making stupid mistakes that you have to clean up. Question for you. Is it other people or is it us? Could be both. Right. We just don't want to point it out to us, right? It's everyone else's problem. What kind of stress is that? Interruptions. Interruptions? Yeah, I have a habit of doing that. <laughs> for, for many, many years, I would always sit back in the corner and be quiet as kind of an observer, and realizing I never had a chance to talk. So then I, I developed skills where I would talk all the time and don't know how to shut up, and sometimes I talk a little bit. So I kind of went backwards. And those kind of things happen in our life. Anyone else experience some of that? Now, a few years ago, I retired out of the Air Force after 21 years. Started my career in the Philippines. Ended up in Maine, Okinawa, Arizona, Saudi Arabia, South Carolina, and here. Retired available Air Force Base. I'm pretty excited about that. So my career took me everywhere. And I remember 9-11, for instance. I was already in the Middle East. And we already had a stressful job being in the military. I know most of our jobs have their own structures, but I was already in there where there was friction and concern. Like a lot of our troops in Afghanistan and this world. Feeling now, when 9 hit, everything vamped up, and the stress level gets higher, and you couldn't go out of the building 
without your helmet on and, and uh, three months of weapon in You do not know. You don't know what's going to happen. Any other military in the audience? <laughs> All right! <laughs> that's okay. So I was fortunate enough to uh, retire on the Air Force with a brother in the Army and another brother in the Marines and a beautiful young lady in the back. We also did 21 years in the Air Force. So I'm really grateful for that. So we all have different careers that bring us to where we're going to be right now. And those are always stressful, right? Like no one just get on your nerves for no particular reason. <laughs> I have a niece and nephew. They, they came to visit me last year. My niece is always like, you get on my last nerve, you get on my last nerve. She says that every other day. I don't know how many nerves she has. <laughs> right? But she would always be out there talking about, get on my last nerve. And her brother will never say anything. And they both, in my mind, they're really young, you know, 20 something year olds, <coughs> lazy one, just sit around and do nothing. You ask them to do something, they'll do it. But that's stressful for me. I don't want to ask them. They should know what to do, right? We ever get that with employees? Especially when you're paying someone, they should know what to do. And we run into problems like that sometimes. There's not a clear definition of what's expected of us. Lack of communication, maybe? Sure, sure. All right, so <laughs> it's a long list of stressors. But, you know, basically, anxious. Low morale, depression. You know, about people coming to work late. I know some people come to work late and make it up by leaving work early. <laughs> right? You gotta make it up somehow. He's like, I'm taking excessive days off from work. And you know, it's an average of 13 to 15 million sick days a year. I mean, that does the perversity, but overall, people sick are calling them sick. Because when you have depression or stress or anxiety, you get lots of your stomach. You might actually have a real sickness or illness, but maybe you just don't want to go in the work for whatever reason. <coughs> and sometimes that's because we don't get along with our coworkers. Sometimes we don't get along with the boss. Sometimes we don't get along with. So what's the number one cause of stress in the workplace? Hmm. A lot of things. Well, I want to tell you one thing. It's not our computer equipment. It's not our systems. It's not our phones. It's not the power plays out. Our number one stressors come from <coughs> people. People get our last nerve. <laughs> people get our last nerve. And, and I think we're all people in here, correct? Right. Last time we said we're all people. So why do we when we get a job we're excited like hey so my resume is someone bought that we could do all the things we said we could do, right? <laughs> we took them in to pay us a decent salary or told to getting more later on. And then they hire a bunch of other people like us. Who also don't necessarily know what they're doing. And we're all expected just to get along. We have different backgrounds. I'm from the great state of Ohio, I'll always be a, a Buckeye, even though I live in California right now. Who knows what the future is going to hold it? It doesn't matter, it's irrelevant, travel around the world. But our, our different cultures, languages, just, just background, upbringing, and then they bring us all together in the workplace because we all are educated. And we all have a certain experience and knowledge of something. And then we get together and someone has a Someone's kids. Someone has a flat tire. Someone parents or not. When we come to work, we we'll lash out. And what do you and I do when someone lashes out and doesn't do their job? That's right. We get in their face. We jump down their throats. Say, "What's wrong with you? You're supposed to meet this deadline." You're supposed to do what we hired you to do. You're supposed to be responsible for what we want you to do. And often we forget that any other day can any one of us with similar situations where we're not giving our best. 
Now, if you look at this list in here, real common was stress in the workplace, stress in everyday life. Now, me being a psychologist, and probably more importantly, a veteran, a lot of the things right here, depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, suicide. When people are not acknowledged at their job, when, when people feel left out, when people feel not listened to, we often go over them. We often go over them. So maybe here's a good question. Whose responsibility is but when someone's stressing us out, what, what are we supposed to do about it? If anything, this is some age order. What do you do? Take a walk. You <laughs> take a walk. <laughs> someone's, got, someone's walking right now, right? We're not sure who, but somebody's going to take a walk. Yes, ma'am. Well, I do work in HR, and the most important thing about resolving some of those stressors is to address it before it becomes more than a stressor and address it early. That's right. We'll see someone come up with, you know, my last year, two, three days in a row, or come in a late three, four days in a row, or someone burst out in anger from time to time, and we just hope it to disappear, right? We need to acknowledge those things and we deal with it. It doesn't matter who it is, your boss, your co-worker, your employee, when something's out of whack, you really have to find a way to do it. have to find a way to do it. So, let's talk about, first of all, respect and <laughs> Dignity, we all want to feel that at all times, correct? But we have to have boundaries with each other. And when we don't have clear communication and boundaries of what we can talk about, what we can't, it causes even other stress. <coughs> now, I was talking to some people earlier, I'm, I'm a Toastmaster. And I learned that after my military career, and I learned how to communicate after I got my doctorate. All before that, I had no idea what I was talking about. But I thought of it. And when someone didn't understand what I wanted done, because I've been in leadership most of my adult life, management or something, but when someone didn't do what I thought I expected them to do, I thought it was their fault. No problem. Anyone else know what? Right, it's their problem. I agree. I agree. But more often than not, especially in relationships, forget the job. What about our personal relationships? And that back and forth communication is sometimes misunderstood. I like to know the Toastmaster experience, I do a lot of training. Still, sometimes my communication is misunderstood. <laughs> I'm still guilty. It's something I'm continuously working on. But a lot of times we just don't get why the other person is doing those things that are expected. And guess what? Let me tell you a secret. They don't understand why we don't get it either. They don't understand why we don't get them also. It's a two-way street. We all have similar issues. I'm going to tell you a little story. I have, I have a neighbor. The neighbor had this, well, two dogs. You know, little dogs, what do they sound like? Yap, 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 yap. Right, they never shut up. Yap, 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 yap. Every time I come outside, they yap, yap, yap. To me, you pet them, they don't shut up. Problem. And they had a cat also, and, and when the cat came out, the dog shut up. You know, Mind your own business, the cat, you know, kind of strut. <laughs> Straight cat strut, I think there's a song about that. Right? So the cat came out, the dogs were quiet, the cat kind of went the roost. And he was part of the family doing his job. Catch a rodent here, catch a gopher there, bring it to mom, everybody's happy, right? What can the dogs do? Yap, 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 yap. Right? So it's good. One day, the neighbor, they had the yappy dogs, and they had the cat, and they decided to bring home another dog. And I said, pit bull, why not? A little pit bull, a little bigger than a yappy. But when they're small, they're small. But as that dog got bigger, I don't think he got me or just looked me. But the cat did not like to be around him as often. When the dog went out to play, the cat disappeared. That's where the cat went. My house! I don't like cats! I don't even have a dog because I'm always traveling. I don't want the responsibility of those things. 
But during the day, when the, the dogs are outside playing, the cat would jump over the fence to my house and chill. What happens? We don't feed you. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Yeah. So that's how I will get back to the story. So we have a cat that disappears from the neighbor's house and comes to our house for different reasons. And sometimes we get that. We're, we're working with people and they'd rather be somewhere else. Have you felt that way? <laughs> Can I raise your hand? Maybe some of you work together, but um, <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes I do um, speak, you know, talks like this. Whole organizations where everyone from the top down is in there really going to talk for obvious reasons. And I'm sure that's got more here. But I think we're all we're all dolls in the hand, right? Right. <laughs> right. I heard about some big organizations here, North of Drummond, awesome organization. Amgen, a lot of other things. And those are organizations that are continuously growing, and there's never any stress there. So that's awesome. <laughs> 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 Probably more importantly, when I was looking for work 10 years ago, where were you then? That's why I needed work. I left the military after 21 years of the master's degree in business. I can have that. 21 years of Travel the world, world experience. I could not find a job that would pay me equivalent to what I was expecting. So here I'm living in California, couldn't find work, and so I moved back to Ohio. But so great, it's cheaper here at least, right? Nothing else. <laughs> I had retirement, not much of retirement, but I had some of retirement. And a lot of jobs I applied for, including gas station attendant, where I was overqualified, of course. Or the manager would say, I cannot hire you because you'll have my job in six months. And even this neighborhood right here, I applied for a job in New York years, selling time shares. And I, I had the job, and that's what we're talking about. I'm driving home, almost two, three hours home. They call me, hey, why don't you come back for a second interview? <laughs> well, I'm driving home, okay, so I turn around and come back, and let me get the job. So, anyways, the boys, when I left California, I went to Ohio. Washington Mutual, you remember Washington Mutual, yeah. to now Chase Bank. They offered me a job as assistant manager. Santa Barbara was like, I'm sorry, I can't take it, I already moved. So I'm in Ohio for six, seven, eight, nine months, and uh, that, that white stuff comes out of the air, you know, you know that snow, right? Snow. So we had snow coming down in February, like, what am I doing? I'm in Ohio, I'm not making money here either, I'm going to go back to California. One week after we get back to California, a few of lady calls me from Akron, Ohio. Said, like, hey, we got a job for you. You want a production oh manager? <laughs> she said, no, I just moved. I had different stressors. I was overqualified, underqualified, ugly, handsome. I don't know what it was, but I wasn't getting the job. Handsome. Handsome. I don't laugh about it. Was, <laughs> she take notes there. She take notes. <laughs> Because in all of us, in our mind, we have an idea of what we, what we are. We don't want to ask anyone else. <laughs> so, what's more stressful? <laughs> Having a job or looking for a job? Looking for a job. 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 It should be. <laughs> it should be. Now, if you're single, if you no family to take care of the care. Let's travel somewhere else. But we have responsibilities providing for our family. They're taking the job. <laughs> so why did when we have work? Provide our bills are paid in that job. Why did we get so anxious? And a little upset sometimes. A lot of things get to you, right? What are some ideas that things get to you? No, I said we allow things. <laughs> That's why you should. Well, I mean, we allow things to bug us. Yes, you know, could, and just, in the company I used to work for in my previous life, part of the stress was you didn't know if going into work, if that was going to be your last day because it was the way aerospace is back, back in the 90s. So that, that in, in itself, in a, in a boom bust type of you know um, not economy um, type of you know business like aerospace is sure. booming and then so 
something happens in Washington and it goes bust, you know, you, you know, you, that in itself is, is, is very stressful. Gotcha. That brings up a good point. I did have a job once after the military. I'm actually a licensed aircraft mechanic, initial MBA, and all those other things. I was offered a job in this production company who made turbo expanders. And they were making a position for me, some department had a something. Not sure what it was, but that position didn't exist yet. So they wanted me to learn the ropes, right? You know I learned the ropes. I still made when my supervisor found out they more money to him, he wasn't so happy. <laughs> but in the bottom of uh, the chain of a maintenance factory, the production company, in my case, it's turning wrenches again. It's running forklifts again. It's doing uh, all these things I haven't done in years. I, I'm still old. <laughs> my back hurt. My knees hurt. I couldn't bend down like I used to. Hey, I enjoyed the money. Money was good. Money was real good. For someone to come out of the military, it was real good money. But I couldn't do the job. I was like, yes, I'll take it. Remember I talked about earlier, sometimes our resumes don't really match the things we used to be able to do, or we thought we could do. So we need to be careful when we're hiring people. Can we do the job? Are we flexible enough to let them give them time to learn? Give ourselves time to learn and adapt to a new work. Many of us, as we get older and transfer from job to job, organization to organization, we bring a skill set with us. Every company's a little bit different. Expect a little different. HR is common, but every organization is a little different. So we need to make sure we give everyone else the opportunity to grow. Give everyone else an opportunity to learn. And <laughs> if they want to vent, let them vent. Um, Joseph? Yes, sir. Um, go on. If you go back to screen, something interesting is that don't, you don't have to tolerate abusive behavior. What I've noticed <coughs> in the last actually four or five years, most larger companies have a low tolerance for managers who are abusive. You can't do that no more, right? What? You can't be abusive no more as a manager. Well, I'm not a manager, but <laughs> but, I, 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 but 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 I, I've seen I've seen these in the company I work for that um, I I mean there was there was a vice president of operations that he, he would be very verbally abusive to employees and back in the back in the 80s and 90s they'd get away with that but I remember a couple times you know later uh, he he got you know in this in the new regime he got hauled down to HR for for the you know, Companies now don't have, have I don't know what, North is probably that way. Right. Um, <laughs> there is a no tolerance for any type of abuse at work, but that doesn't mean that those policies are hurt to, because you're, you shouldn't be using profanity at work. And how many have heard profanity yes. sometimes during the week? Right. So abuse does happen, including bullying. You shouldn't have a folder in your outlook called bullying. <laughs> Where you can sweep emails to. Don't you believe? Exactly. Yeah. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be civil to work and the behavior that you use is <coughs> sometimes that you can get away with, you necessarily can't get away with it at work. Yeah, you're at work, so. Yeah, yeah, at work. Uh, look, come on, you never had those jokes at work? So we had a customer. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very, very interesting. A customer? A customer. And I think that all the North Park team is so surprised that this director acted that way. Um, we got out of it as quickly as we could. Sure. But sure. You know, it's a customer. Lockheed Martin, a customer. So. And that's a good point. We, we don't put up with our co workers or our boss, supposedly. We do it with the outside customer. Oh. So we figured that, we, we really figured that how we make it. Somebody's going to say something, but right. hopefully, because that was, was an absolute barrier. And if you're calling out your customer, you could lose a client, yeah. right. which is, in this case, a lot of money. Yes? I have a solution for customers. I did this once a long time ago. Yes. Customers used to get really pissed off, mad when something didn't work. I would be all apologetic to them and be all nice. They would call back a few hours later 
and tell the person I was working with, tell me that they were sorry for the way they treated me and that I handled it well. So it all else fails, be super nice to them and apologize and make them feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, you certainly got the attention. Yeah. And, and do you know those? Uh, most bullies that you've been neglected as a child or bullied themselves. Or, yes, I'm not. Oh, I know, they, they got something going on. We all got something going on. How do we deal with that? You understand that everybody has something going on. And they just happen day to day, and I'm going to let you do that. Today. <laughs> Today. <laughs> and tomorrow, we'll call you out. Tomorrow, you might have to be you know. Now, coming from, a, coming from a military background, you can imagine what it was 40, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And some of those things that happened back then are still things. We still get sexual rights. We still got bullying. We still got people pushing their rank around. Still threatening people with we're not going to get promoted because of whatever the case is. Our highest esteem and it should be every company, but that stuff still goes around, which causes undue stress. I mean, kind of went off a little bit about talking about what causes stress when someone pushes their way off. Like they get away with anything, they don't ever call them to check them. Very stressful. Very stressful. Hey, Joseph, you said a lot of point. Create another opportunity for better communication to expand on that. It sounds like sure. if you didn't get the dignity and respect that you wanted, you kind of let it go, maybe, and then you create another opportunity where you can be satisfied. A, a lot of us, myself included, okay, having a bad day, walk away, what else can be better? But if it's consistent, then you need to call something else, right? So, hey, you know, you know you're being a knucklehead, you're being disrespectful, or, or more important, what's going on? How can I help you? You need a couple days off? Whatever it is, we have to open up that dialogue. And usually, when if you're the boss, and, Employees causing the problem. A lot of us are a little more direct. Stop this. We don't tolerate that behavior anymore. Or, you know, we'll find somebody to replace you. All of those things. And very few of us take the time to listen, try to comprehend where they're coming from. And in fact, Toastmasters, one of the organizations I'm involved with, started to speak in organizations. But one of the most important things they teach is this one. I talked about earlier how I could sometimes talk over people because for a long time I couldn't. So I had to step back again and, and listen and make sure I communicate with someone else and give me a chance to talk. Now it's okay to vent. It's okay to vent. By the, the person you want to vent to, or vice versa, use your approval to do that. Don't you dare vent on someone's level. Not, not now, not here. But make sure that's in the Five minutes, ten minutes, two minutes. <clears throat> Make sure we all want to better just talk with someone. But if you're like angry at your boss, is that the one you want to vent to? <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not usually. But not necessarily a coworker either, because you don't want the coworker to have the same negative impression as you do. Who's that person? Yes, Because I'm in HR, I know that there is another opportunity for better communication and better communication. And that's called mediation, alternative dispute resolution, where you can sit down and talk to the person that you have a grievance or the problem with, with the neutral the person to facilitate the conversation. He doesn't have a dog in the fight, if you will, and that'll help you resolve your issue. And it works. That is really tough. I've been in one of those. It's really tough. Because bringing that person in is really escalating things, right? Yeah, that's like that, that's the, the nuclear expensive. option, even though it, it shouldn't be. Right. It's right. Really, but it's really a tough situation like that. It's got to be that. Yeah. Yeah, if it's there, it's already been seen best. That's true. Not just anyone can mediate. It's usually a trained mediator. Before we get all talk and listen to ideas and solutions, but when you're serious enough, you're not that much more professional. Even me as a counselor, there's some things I don't get involved with. Oh, wait, come on. Let's go in That's a good point. What about those lines of communication? Find out why they're acting. 